Hello and welcome to a live stream of the How To Code Well YouTube channel. Uh, I'm doing a live stream really today because uh, I've got a very busy day tomorrow and so this is kind of killing two birds with one stone. I can do a live stream tonight and then publish that tomorrow as a replacement for my uh, usual web chats. Um, so today I'm going to focus on Bash and I don't expect anyone really to see this live uh, purely because uh, I haven't really announced it and obviously the channel is very small but at least I get a, a tutorial off the back of this that I can uh, publish tomorrow. So we're going to look at Bash and we're going to look at how we can easily use uh, Bash commands um, to create files, to amend files, to remove files and directories and so forth. So this is a very basic tutorial um, on Bash and I know that I haven't really touched Bash before although I have done Docker uh, tutorials um, and this might be slightly more advanced than the HTML tutorials that I've done but I'm, I'm itching to do something a little bit more advanced. So uh, here we go. So in the, in the old terminal here, the first thing I'm going to do is type in uh, pwd, which is print working directory, and that's going to print out the file path to exactly where I am. Um, and also if we did an ls, which means list, we can see that we have some directory, uh, some, some folders in here. And if I did ls minus al, we can see uh, a lot of lot more information uh, such as the user which is this part here uh, and the group uh, the permissions now I'm not going to talk too much about permissions today uh, purely because that kind of warrants its own um, uh, a tutorial and then we've got the date in which it was created and then the file size um, now what I'm going to do is actually create a new directory and add a, fo a file in there um, so what we do is uh, mkdir, um, and I just say that this is mkdir. I know it's not because it doesn't have the small c, but mkdir, which is make directory. Um, and I'm just going to do temp because I'm just going to throw this stuff away later on. So let's do temp. And then in order to change the working directory to that file, to that folder, sorry, we need to do a cd, which is change directory, into temp, like so. And then what we can do is another ls, and we can see that it's completely empty. Now, um, one thing that uh, I'm going to mention here is that this terminal is getting quite large, uh, as in the output is getting quite large. What we can do is actually clear that down, and we literally type in clear, like so. Now, before I go on, um, I would just like to mention that this is... Uh, an iMac that I'm working on, but I mean you could use any kind of Linux distribution, um, Ubuntu, uh, Linux Mint and so forth. Um, and there's some different types of uh, Linux sh shells that you can use. So uh, for instance this is Bash, you could use something else. Um, and But to be honest the commands are pretty much the same. There are some differences between the different types of shells, but they are uh, pretty much the same. So don't worry, you don't need an iMac to do this. <coughs> Excuse me, you don't need an iMac to do this um, or, you know, an Apple thing, but um, you do need some form of Unix uh, terminal um, which will allow you to use Bash and, you know, Ubuntu is probably one of the most common uh, Debian distributions. So anyway, let's continue. We've created our um, uh, let's go back to the tutorial. Let's we've created our uh, directory, and if we did ls like so, it's completely empty. Now, if I did ls minus a, now these minuses are the uh, the options, right? So ls minus minus a. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, we can see that we have um, a dot here and two dots. Now, the dot means that it's the current the current working directory, okay, and then the two dots means that it's the parent directory. So if we did cd dot, then we are still in the same directory, but if we did cd dot dot, then we come out of that directory and go back into the parent directory. So again, if I did an ls, we can see that we have the temp uh, directory here. Now, I've done an ls here, but it doesn't actually look very obvious that these are directories and these are, are files. 
Uh, but what you can do is an ls minus al, and you can see that the, the file sizes of these things. Um, and also you can see that some of these are actually directories. So if I did an, uh, a CD back into temp and then an LS, and I'm going to do a clear again just to clear that down. Okay, so let's actually go and create something. Let's create a, uh, a file in here. And in uh, Linux, what you do is you, you, do, you use the, the touch command. So touch, uh, spelt not like that, <laughs> like this and it's test.txt so that's whatever the file uh, is what the file name is um, and you can even create files that don't have extensions like just test for instance but i'm going to do test.txt because it's obvious that it's a text file let's uh, press enter and that creates the file so if i did an ls we can see the file in here if i did an ls minus al then we can see that it has zero uh, bytes whatsoever and uh, yeah, so that's the owner. So Peter, uh, that's my, my name, Peter Fisher, obviously. <laughs> and that's the staff. Uh, so that's the group. And this is the permissions. Um, yeah, I won't talk too much about that in this episode, I don't think. So, okay, let's go and add something to this because at the moment it's completely blank, okay, because it has zero bytes. So let's go and add some content. Um, so there's uh, lots of ways we can do this. Um, you can use editors if you wish. Uh, there are editors such as Vim and uh, Nano. So I'm going to show you the, both of those two. And you can also stream um, sort of input into the, that file as well. I'll show you that also. So the first one I'm going to do is demonstrate Nano. So all you do is type Nano, N-A. And what I'm going to do is just do another N and then a tab. And we've got Nano. And I'm just going to type in the uh, the file name. So again, te and then tab, and then that's that's auto completed, um, and then press enter. Now we're in this kind of uh, editor um, type thing, I guess. Um, and here you can literally just start typing stuff. Um, so I'm just going to do the the usual hello world, yeah, hello world. And in order to save this, th you can either save this as it is, so you write the you write the output, or you can exit and it'll ask you to save the output. Or s basically, what you've done is you've created output within a buffer, and you're saving that buffer to the file. So what I'm going to do is Control X because all of these where it's um, got the 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 arrow sign here, that basically means Control. So Control and then X, and then it's going to ask me. Um, do I want to save the modified buffer? And the modified buffer in this case has the, the text hello world. Um, so answering no will destroy your changes. Answering yes will save the file and exit the editor. So we can do that. So I'm going to do just Y and then it's going to ask me to uh, write the file name. So this allows me to change the file name at this point, but I don't want to change the file name. So I'm just going to press um, enter. And there we go. So that's cre uh, updating a file in Nano. And what we can do is do an ls minus al. And notice that we now have a different file size. Um, before it was 0, and now we have 12. Now, what, you know, 12, 102, what, what does that, that all mean? I mean, that's, that's just daft. If you've got huge files, then it's not going to be very obvious how big these things are. It's not a very human readable um, uh, uh, description of the file size. So there's a way you can get around that and that is using the du command and if you did uh, minus h for human readable output and then just typed in test like so and pressed uh, enter again we can see that it's actually four kilobytes um, and the human readable part has, has turned uh, these 12 bytes into four kilobytes, essentially. <coughs> Excuse me, I, I have a, a bit of a nasty cough. So um, that's uh, altering the, the file using Nano. Another thing we can use is Vim. So again, I'm going to just clear this screen down. Now with uh, VI, you do VI like so, um, Vim like that, sorry, and then you do, or, or VI, it's an alias of it, uh, and then you type in test. Now this editor usually um, confuses 
a lot of, of, of it certainly confuses me from time to time. Um, and that's how on earth you get out of this editor. I'm only going to show you a brief, a brief introduction to this because believe me, you me, Vim requires its own um, uh, series of tutorials. It's so, it's so advanced. Basically, if you want to get out of, um, you, you've got several modes, if you will, several modes of, of Vim. So insert mode, for example, is one of them. Um, and if you want to get out of that mode, you simply press escape, 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 and you come out of that mode. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is just type in um, I to get into insert mode. So all I've done is just typed I, okay? So I'm going to just go all the way back to the end of the line, and there is easier ways to do this, but again, this is a beginner's uh, tutorial. And all I'm going to do is just put in an exclamation mark like so. Now, how do I get out of this? Well, like I said, you press uh, escape, so that, can you see that the insert thing has gone here? And then what you do, is you do a uh, colon like so, and then write, which is W, and quit, which is Q. And there you go. So again, if I did an LS uh, minus AL, we can see that it's now gone to 13 bytes. Um, so it was zero, and then it went to 12, and now it's gone to 13. Okay, let's clear the screen down again. And let's see if we can actually put some input into this without actually going into a into an editor. <clears throat> now, one thing we can do is uh, print or echo stuff and then stream that to the file. Streaming, again, it kind of warrants its own series of tutorials because there's all sorts of lovely things you can do with um, input and output streaming in, in Linux. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Um, so... Uh, but I'm just going to show you um, a couple of ways of doing it. So let's do echo. So this is just echoing stuff out to the to the screen. And if I did echo, um, hello, uh, viewers, like that, right? And just did that. It's just going to echo that out to standard output. Okay, so that th that was input. That was output. And that's out echoing it out to the screen. So what we can do is actually pass this into the file. Okay, so again, if we, and what I'm going to do here is just is just press up because um, that gets to the to the last thing on the history. I'm going to look at history in a minute. So we we've got this command already set. Now what I'm going to do is do a um, what's it called uh, a greater than symbol. <laughs> it's been a long day. A greater than symbol, um, and then we're going to pass that to the to the file that we want to. Um, send that output stream to right. So here we do uh, test. So the, the the way that was quick was I just did T and then tab right because that knows that there is only one file that begins with T in this directory. And what that's going to do is it's going to send um, the standard output of this, which would be that right, into the file. And because I'm doing uh, uh, this symbol here, what it's going to do is either, um, well, it's going to override the con content in this file. Okay, so let's do that. Let's try press enter. And then what we can do is, first of all, uh, let's just do an ls uh, minus al again. And we can see that now it's gone to 14 bytes. Okay, so. Uh, let's have a look at the actual contents of that file. You can do this in lots of different ways. Again, you could go into um, an editor like Nano or, or Vim, um, but an, a very easy way of, of, of accessing a file, of viewing a file, when you know that you don't necessarily need to alter that file, is just use cat. Now, cat means concatenation. Um, so cat and then test. And then that outputs whatever is in that file. So this is hello viewers. So can you see if I was to scroll up a little bit here, um, I've cleared down the screen a lot. So um, let's go. Uh, do, 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 do. Of course, I can't see it because it's in the editors. But what I was going to demonstrate is the, the difference of um, changing that file. Uh, we had hello world and then we had a hello world with a with a exclamation mark. And now we've got hello viewers. <coughs> um, and and basically, hello viewers has replaced, overwritten the output 
or sorry, o overwritten the um, what the contents of that file. Now there is another thing we can do with streams, and that is append the output. So what that means is it's going to keep the contents of the file and then append append that to the bottom to the to the next line. It's going to create a new line and then and then add that content. And we do that simply by oops, um, let's go up a bit. Yeah, simply by doing a greater than greater than like that. So if I pressed enter like so and then did a ls minus al again just to prove that the the file size is getting bigger so here's 28 then did another cat into that file then we can see hello viewers hello viewers and if i was to keep doing this so if i did that and then that and then that and you can imagine that this could be in a loop some you know somehow um and it's just printing out this um and then just do a cat <coughs> of that file, then we can see we've got a lots of that um, that input. So you've got to be very careful when you're um, manipulating files that you've got the right inputs and output streams. Okay, so we've done a lot of file manipulation. Um, we've done a lot of um, uh, going around the terminal and stuff. But let's imagine. <coughs> oh, sorry, let's imagine. Let's uh, let's uh, get back into the shot let's imagine that you've done a lot of commands um, in the last couple of days and you f you kind of remember what a command is but you don't remember the full path now I see a lot of developers both um, junior and senior who just retype the command and there is a history in bash and and the terminal um, which you can search for, you can search through, sorry. So you can you can uh, see what you previously had typed in the in the in the terminal and then you can you can even search for particular commands and then execute them very, very quickly. And I do this so often. It's so uh, it, once I learned how to do this, it was a it did change a lot of of um, <coughs> how I worked. Um, because I was able to do things quicker and get th the whole point is you're able to get at things much quicker. Um, now I do a lot of work on um, uh, well, obviously in this office and then in other offices too. And in order to get from that office to the other offices, um, I usually take a train, right? Um, and I do a lot of work on the train whenever I get, you know, a, a, a place to sit down. Um, and uh, I'm able to then recreate the, the, the history or reuse a, a command that I've had in the history before. Um, and it's fantastic when you're using things like Docker uh, because you've got uh, the history is obviously stored in the Docker containers, obviously, because if you're using Bash. Um, so with this thing here, if I bring it over here, so with this uh, laptop thing, um, I'm able to just close the lid because it's got an, a solid state drive in it. I close the lid, um, I get onto a train, open the lid again, and off I go. Um, and I can I can access the history and, and so forth. It's great for Docker, like I said. Let's have a look at that. Let's take a look at the history. So let's go into here. I'm just going to move that because that's getting annoying. Right. So we've created a lot of a lot of stuff and what I'm going to do is clear that down. So imagine you've just come to your terminal fresh. It's another day and you want to remember what you did the previous day. So a great command you can do is history like this. And this just lists out everything you've done, right? All the way, all the way back. <coughs> um, and obviously when I started this, I removed the history. I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Um, and uh, the numbers on the left hand side here, uh, they you can access each one of these things using the, the numbers. So let's say uh, the first command I did was print working directory, um, which was 12. OK, and you can see that these are all new numeric. So what you do to a in order to access this is if I was to do exclamation mark. Well, let's clear this down. Let's clear that down. The exclamation mark and then 12. That's all you need to do. Press enter and there you go. So it outputs the, the command that you're actually running, which is very useful, just in case you get it wrong. And then it actually executes the command as well. 
So you know, you you don't need to keep r typing your your commands. You know, as long as you do do it once, then then you can find it. You can you can uh, go back through your history and um, use that as a way of 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 recreating those commands. <coughs> but hang on a minute, that is a bit slow. That doing that is is quite tedious. Having to do history. I mean, you can imagine if this had, I don't know, t tens, hundreds of 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 things. You would have to scroll back and all of this stuff. And yes, there is duplication here, ls minus al and stuff. Um, there is a way of actually searching through this. Um, let's clear that down. And that is called a reverse search. Now, when I learned how to do this, it certainly changed uh, the way I work. You do that by pressing Control and R. And you can see it's got a reverse I search. So this is a, um, a reverse search of the history. And uh, let's say if, if, if I wanted to just list something out, so I would just do L. And then, so that's clear. And it does a reverse search, so it, it knows the last one. So let's do LS. And it knows that we've got an LS with an AL command in it too. So let's run that, and there you go. Um, so let's say I wanted to append another thing to that file. I could do um, ls, sorry, I could do um, greater than symbol, and there you go. And it, it, the thing is, the, the really, really good thing about this is it puts the cursor exactly where it's found that, that, uh, that thing, that term. So it's here. So, for example, if I wanted to um, quickly... Uh, uh, override this file, I would just press backspace and then press enter. Okay, so let's do an, um, let's go up ls minus al. Uh, so that's gone back down to 14 bytes now. So very, very simple, very easy to, to, to do. If you remember just small portions of the command, then it's very easy to, to, um, to find, find it. Um, <coughs> and if you can't find it, you just simply just do, um, uh, I don't know, ls, and then minus, and then a, and you just keep typing, and you see where the, f the screen is flashing. It's because it doesn't have anything else. And you can just press backspace to uh, bring that back as well. And control c is, will kill the command. Okay, so if you're, if you're typing something crazy, and you're like, I don't want to, I don't want to execute this, then press control c, and it brings you back to uh, a fresh prompt. Okay, so, with uh, streams, there's a way of actually searching, physically searching through um, the history. And that's combining um, things like uh, grep as well as the history. So the beauty of um, Unix is that it, um, the, the part of the philosophy of Unix, of course, is to have small um, portions of, well, small applications. And those applications um, do one job and one job well, and the r and that allows you to send the the output of one job as an input to another job and string that and chain that together. So we can string the we can pass the output of the history command as the input of the grep command. Now grep is a way of searching for things, searching for strings. Um, so let's clear this down. Oops, if I spell that right, that would be great. So let's do, excuse me. Uh, my damn throat. So let's do history um, like that. His <laughs> history. And then what we do is we pipe that. So that's the pipe symbol, okay? Uh, we pipe that, that output. The output of that is this. So we, we pipe that output. Um, oops. So history. Pipe that output to something called grep. Now grep is a way, like I said, of searching uh, for things. So we do a grep and then we do um, uh, quotes like this. And we can just type in a, a string and it will search for it. So for example, if we did ls, then it will search for every command that had ls in it. And as you can see, there's quite a few here. So if you're not too sure what all the arguments are in your commands that you did, say, yesterday or five days ago, then you can do an ls 
uh, minus al and or sorry you can do a history pipe to grep, pipe that to grep which is sending that um, output to that input um, and looking for ls and that's the output here so as you can see none of this is is in any kind of order because what it's done is it's gone through the history command and it's just picked out all the ones with ls in the, in them now i said before we can actually clear down and, and we can actually remove the history and that's very important especially if you're um if you're managing um an application maybe you've, you've gone into a production box and just for sheer security reasons you want to remove your history every time you 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 come out or something you know um and you can do that so let's do a clear bring that back to the top I'm going to do a history just to prove that there is history, um, which there is. So clear that down. Um, what you do is a history. Whoops. <laughs> oh, this live malarkey. History. And then you do a minus C. And a minus C will clear the history like that. So now if I did history again, history, you only have one command, which is itself, which is history. Um, so that's a very good way of of clearing your your previous commands just in case you know if if you don't want people to if if you're working on a very risky thing and you don't want other developers to to i don't know look at what you've done um i can't really think of any reason off the top of my head apart from maybe security but whatever um and obviously this stuff gets very long i mean you know, you can imagine a box that has hasn't been touched for years and years and years and years, or has been touched but hasn't been cleared down for years and years and years. Um, so this can get quite lengthy, and uh, especially if you're doing stuff like setting up users. So uh, if you were setting up users and setting up um, uh, security credentials and stuff like that, some of that information will be in the history, obviously, because you're creating users. I'm not going to show you how to create users today, maybe later on in, in another in another tutorial. <coughs> but if you were um, if you were someone who was able to compromise a, a, a box, a server and you did a history and you went right to the very beginning then that might give you give away some um, uh, information that is very valuable to the setup of your system so there is that reason <coughs> okay I'm just gonna double check the description of this because uh, I did I did kind of write one um, so what we've done is uh, we've moved to different directories via the command line We've uh, created a folder in Bash, obviously, and we have um, created a blank file, added some contents to it. We used a bit of Vim, a very small bit of Vim, I should say, and also Nano. Um, and we also, uh, uh, so we changed the contents of the file, um, and we demonstrated this how to search the history and display the history. So I think I'm going to leave it there. I don't actually know how long this uh, stream has gone this is the first stream i've done so um hopefully it's uh it's gone all right um i've literally done it tonight simply because i'm very busy tomorrow and i can't do a a, a web chat like i normally do so this is kind of its replacement however i would be very interested to know what your feedback is uh, whether the sound quality was good enough, whether the video was good enough, um, whether I'm just not talking about the right stuff. Um, I'll be very interested to hear from you purely because um, I do this in my free time. This isn't anything that I get paid for. Um, I'm a freelancer and I obviously have a, a my full-time job um, and I've got other commitments as well. So this is any time I spend doing these kind of tutorials, these kind of web chats, is time away from friend, friends and family and, and social stuff like that. So um, I would appreciate some brutal honesty because I don't want to waste my time and your time when I'm talking about um, stuff that I I might not even be interesting. So anyway, uh, I mean, it's uh, interesting to me, right? This is a, this is a, a, an avenue for uh, my web development passion. I've been a web developer for, you know, years, years and years and years. Um, I think it was... 2000 and just having a look at the certificates on the wall 
yeah, 2000 I started. So anyway, um, I will, uh, yeah, I, I'll be interested to hear what your feedback is. Put them in the comment section below. If you found this useful, then do give it a thumbs up. And also, also if you could share it around to others <clears throat> that might find it useful too. Thanks again for watching and uh, I hope you subscribe. Cheers. Bye.